Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the announcement of the first in Canada Digital Skills Program launched by the Trust for the Americas, the Organization of American States, and the Native Women's Association of Canada. We are pleased to announce the Canadian launch of an outstanding digital skills training initiative for Indigenous people today. I want to acknowledge the presence in today's event of the Secretary General of the Organization of American States, Mr. Luis Almagro, the Chief Executive Officer of the Native Women's Association of Canada, Ms. Lynn Gould, the Chief Executive Officer of the Trust for the Americas, Ms. Linda Edelman, and Dr. Daniel Cano, Consultant in Indigenous Affairs at the Office of the Secretary General of the Organization of American States. We are connected from Canada to Washington, D.C., and recording this important announcement together with the teams from the OAS, NWAC, and the Trust for the Americas who have taken part in the development of this initiative that has led us to this important moment. Ms. Linda Edelman will now give the opening remarks. Ms. Edelman. Good morning, and thank you all for joining us today in this hybrid ceremony. On the behalf of the Trust of the Americas, it's my pleasure to, to welcome you to the ceremony to announce, as Lada just mentioned, um, an important initiative to promote skilling for Indigenous people in Canada. As many of you know, the Trust for the Americas is a 501c3, a not-for-profit affiliate for the Organization of American States, and we were established to improve the lives of vulnerable people throughout the hemisphere. In our 25-year history, we've now worked in 26 countries, worked with over 1,000 community organizations, and impacted the lives of over 4 million people. Uh, it's really a pleasure to get together today because in alliance with the Native Women's Association of Canada, we will be working in Canada for the first time. Uh, I want to begin by personally thanking some of the participants in the meeting today, the Secretary General, Luis Almagro of the Organization of American States, uh, Lynn Gru, the CEO of the Native Women's Association of Canada, and also Dr. Danielle Cano, the advisor to the Secretary General on Indigenous Affairs. I'd also like to recognize the efforts of the Board of Directors of Trust Canada, an affiliate of the Trust for the Americas, as well as the support of Ambassador James Lambert, a member of the Board of the Trust for the Americas. Um, we have been very fortunate to have the support of so many people to make this uh, program possible. And of course, um, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the efforts of our technical team on both sides that have helped design this program that we are hoping to implement very shortly. Um, I want to say from the outset that this program would not have been possible um, and I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for the inspiration and the guidance of the Secretary General. Um, I recall that some months ago, the Secretary General in a meeting with, uh, with myself and with some members of the board asked me if, um, if he had to pick one project on which to work, he would like to see the, uh, the trust working on a program to support indigenous peoples in Canada, that it was a priority of his and for the Organization of American States. And we're very pleased that we're gonna be able to get started on something like that. Uh, Dr. Cano was instrumental in making this possible as well because of his efforts. He put us in touch with the Native Women's Association of Canada. Lynn, we had heard so many things about your organization from our board of directors and others from Canada about your organization, a cutting edge organization that fights very hard to advocate for the rights of the indigenous um, in your country. And so it's really a pleasure that we have been able to come to agreement after many months of talks on a skilling program that is going to be supporting adults, um, young adults and mid-career adults to prepare them for jobs. Um, I'd like to just read a little bit about the program then I'll let others get into more details. But essentially we're going to be launching a pilot program that would provide technology and skills training to young and mid-career indigenous people. The program will be implemented in NWAC's new facility located in Gatineau, Quebec, Canada, which is a lovely facility. Our COO was recently there and he couldn't, he went on and on about how wonderful the facility is and how inspiring and it was really a healing space. So we're pleased that we're going to be able to work with you together in that space. Um, that program will identify gaps in labor markets and opportunities for employment and will focus on empowering um, Indigenous women in particular, which is, which is very important to all of us. The program will provide technical training and mentoring to help Indigenous peoples find jobs 
or to improve their entrepreneurial skills. And I think that's really an important point. Lynn, you emphasized us how important it was to not only help people from your community find jobs, but also to find opportunities so they could stay on the native lands. So this is an important aspect of the program, the, the micro entrepreneurship uh, space. And perhaps most importantly, the program will incorporate into the program curricula and techniques consistent with the traditions and sensitivities of Can Canada's indigenous peoples. Um, we particularly thank NWAC for your advice and guidance and ensuring that our programs are relevant to indigenous needs. Um, this is a really uh, a special time to announce a program like this because we're going to be celebrating our 25th year um, in November, the 25th year of, of our incorporation. So this is a wonderful uh, way to kick off that anniversary year. Um, and it's thanks to the efforts of all of you who were joining us in person or um, virtually in making this program possible. So with that, I will turn the mic back over to our Master of Ceremonies, Lara Bersano. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Edelman. It is now my real honor to introduce the Chief Executive Officer of the Native Women's Association of Canada, our friend, Ms. Lynn Gould. Thank you very much. Tanzi, bonjour, good morning, and buenos dias, Secretary General Al Malgro, uh, Ms. Edelman, and everyone who's taken the time to join us today to what is a very much an exciting and cutting edge uh, program that will be delivered here in Canada. I'm joining you today from the unceded Algonquin territory here in Gatineau. It is very much an honor for the Native Women's Association of Canada to work in partnership with the Trust for the Americas as the first ever Canadian partner in a Poeta Digispark program. We firmly believe that it is a historic day in advancing digital and economic equity for Indigenous peoples in Canada. This week, Canadians are reflecting on truth and reconciliation as we have set aside September 30th uh, for Truth and Reconciliation Day in Canada. And it is with that in mind that we announce today this digital initiative uh, for people in Canada. Before I start, why is this program so important? The statistics in Canada show a very significant divide in terms of internet access. Canadians have 94% of Canadians have access to an internet at home, while only 24% of Indigenous peoples have access to internet. This is why this program is so important. Before I begin to get into uh, the program, I have to acknowledge this strong relationship and bond that we formed with the Ameri Organization of American States and NWAC. Secretary General, we're very grateful that you took the time starting in 2019 to come to Canada on NWAC's invitation. The genuine connections you made with grassroots Indigenous people were very impactful and the community members are still talking about that visit today. You helped shine light on human rights issues happening in Canada. You demonstrated that, that commitment again in 2020 at our Summit of the Americas and now in 2022 we are again talking about uh, human rights in Canada with this uh, digital program. So we believe that the Organization of American States is a critical ally in the advancement of our organization's goals and the goals of increasing mutual economic opportunities in Canada. And we are going to introduce this program in this beautiful new building. I'm here in the building today called the Social and Economic Innovation Center. Uh, and we're very happy to have this program, which will ha have a certification uh, held here in this building. I want to refer back to a final report on the National Inquiry that was handed down in Canada three years ago, a thousand page report that issued 231 calls for justice, 231 legal imperatives, 231 different actions and ways that we could end violence. And the report identified a number of pathways to end that violence. This announcement today aims to address three of those four pathways. And it is critically important that we take the time to really understand how the, a program on its surface uh, seemed, appears to be a skills development, but underneath that is much, much more. The first pathway is the maintenance of status quo and the lack of institutional will. Training Indigenous people for digital workplace where jobs are high in demand certainly shakes up that status quo. 
It disrupts the colonial mindset that says that Indigenous people are forever relegated to precarious work. And it shows that although we strongly care about our tradition, we're able and eager to compete on a level of footing for, other, for the jobs of tomorrow. The second pathway for ending the violence is the propensity to ignore the agency and expertise of Indigenous women, girls, and 2SGBTQIA people. By ensuring NWAC as the Canadian partner for the Poeta Digital Spark program, our partners are saying that we are exactly the people who can and should manage our programs. It is an acknowledgement that we are the ones who are best placed to ensure that this program truly empowers our community members. Indeed, that program should be developed by Indigenous people for Indigenous people. The third pathway, and perhaps the most important, the National Inquiry identified ending social and economic marginalization as a third pathway to ending violence. This program we are announcing today addresses that issue head on. The program will provide Indigenous people with the skills they need to obtain those good and high paying jobs that put roofs over our heads and food on our tables and perhaps even bring some prosperity to the families and communities. After all, we cannot share just in the poverty, we must share in the prosperity. There's even more to consider in relation to the National Inquiry. The Poeta Digital Spark, Spark Program directly answers a number of National Inquiry calls for justice. In particular, it answers call for justice 4.4, which says that governments and others must provide support and resources for educational and employment opportunities for Indigenous women and their families. In this case, it is the OAS, the Quest for the Americas, and the NWAC who are providing those supports. And we are seeking, we're also seeking a government partner that would like to come into this exciting project into the future. And I'm confident that that will happen because Canada does consider itself and is considered a leader in human rights. Um, and technology is an important, access to technology is an important human right. In conclusion, we talk a lot at NWAC about inclusion uh, and the economy and economic resiliency. This is the kind of program that builds resiliency and has a significant ripple effect in the community. We as an organization are determined to help end a genocide in Canada. We are determined to see Indigenous women, girls, two-spirited, gender diverse people have the economic opportunities they deserve. So thank you to the Organization of American States, the Trust for the Americas, for partnering with NWAC and helping us to make this outstanding initiative a reality in Canada. We know this initiative will be a success and it will translate to a success for the participants and their families and the communities. And we eagerly await and welcome those participants. Thank you very much. Merci, Marcy. Thank you very much. It's good. Dr. Daniel Cano will now introduce the Secretary General of the Organization of American States, Mr. Luis Almag. Dr. Cano, the floor is yours. Good morning, buenos dias. Uh, thank you, Lara, Lynn, Linda, for your ways and kind words. Uh, now, please me, allow me to introduce you the Secretary General uh, of the OAF, Mr. Almagro. Mr. Almagro has been involved with your organization since the year 2019, when you generously welcomed him in your territory and your communities. During his visit, you share with him your most intimate sorrows for those sisters and daughters who are not longer with us. At the same time, you show him the strength and resilience of the relatives and friends who are fighting for justice and reparation. That personal encounter between your organization and Mr. Almagro mark the beginning of a close relationship uh, of cooperation, support, and friendship. Uh, it was a powerful experience. I can say that because I was there as a witness. It's also confirmed that when you allow our, where we allow ourselves to be touched by human kindness, 
in a context of mutual respect and trust. Yeah, wonderful things can happen. Now, without further ado, I leave you with the Secretary General. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. And uh, very nice to see you, uh, Lynn. Great pleasure. Thank you very much for this opportunity to work together again. And definitely the best, uh, best memories of our visit to your territories and and definitely uh, uh, the experience uh, that uh, I acquired there is uh, something that is impossible to transfer, impossible to forget. Thank you very, very, very much. And uh, about this, uh, about this project is that I, I put myself in the very wise and efficient hands of, of Linda, as I was in the efficient hands of, uh, of Daniel before. And uh, it, it, it is not something that happens all the time here in the organization, <laughs> that I am efficient <laughs> hands, <laughs> but I am with them definitely in the very best, very best hands. And, and I'm sure that we can do much, much more in the future. And I think this is just a, a first step and that will move forward doing uh, even uh, better and greater things in the in the future. And uh, dear friends, uh, this is a special day of celebration in which we are gathered to recognize a virtuous partnership between the Native Women's Association of Canada. By the fact, I always wear uh, when there is indigenous meetings in uh, at the organization. I always wear my dress, red dress. Yeah, and today I forgot it, and I. Uh, <laughs> I feel like, a, oh my goodness, <laughs> and, uh, but I always do it, and uh, because it's, uh, it, that red dress means a lot in about human rights and about preserving peoples and lives, and that uh, we should honor that those red dresses always. Um, your Native Women's Association, the Trust for the Americas, and the OES that has led to a very concrete result, the launch of a training initiative for indigenous populations in Canada named DigiPark Canada, empowering indigenous peoples with digital skills. I cannot think of a better way to promote economic and educational opportunities for indigenous people than this initiative, which seeks to empower young adults and mid-career adults from indigenous communities with technology and skills training. I would like to congratulate our friends of the Native Women Association of Canada for the incredible work they do to represent the voices of indigenous women. I, I mentioned the efficient hands of, uh, of Linda and Danielle, but your efficient hands are very relevant in this matter. Um, definitely. And um, to represent the voices of indigenous women, girls, and gender diverse people in Canada, inclusive of First Nations, Inuit, and Métis. As an eyewitness of your mission, since you welcomed me in your communities on December 2019, I can affirm that our relationship has grown stronger every day. Uh, it was before that, it was in the General Assembly in, uh, in that uh, we started our, our very strong relation and uh, having our exchanges of, uh, of messages. This project is another proof of such a vibrant and powerful commitment. I also want to congratulate the Trust of, for the Americas for the ongoing efforts to bring more rights for more people across the region. This project targets uh, critical issues that affect indigenous people in the hemisphere as set forth in the American Declaration on the Rights of the Indigenous Peoples adopted by the member states of the OES in June 2016 and the following plan of action. I am convinced that its implementation will highlight best practices and design of a multi-stakeholder approach to develop community-based solutions in the region through technology and through ongoing dialogue between governments, private sector, and key civil organizations, society organizations. We believe the success of this project will become an example of how to achieve inclusive, sustainable social and economic development with indigenous communities and the region as a whole. The project itself tackles critical issues that affect indigenous people in Canada and beyond, 
These challenges this include unemployment and underemployment, as well as the lack of access to economic opportunities, due in part to the legacy of colonialism, including residential schools and forced assimilation. According to a Statistic Canada survey from 2020, almost half of Indigenous people say the reason they have a difficulty finding work was due to a lack of education and access to training for available jobs. In addition, more than one third of indigenous people reported that their computer skills limited their future job prospects. Moreover, indigenous women are even farther marginalized in the labor market. I am pleased to see POETA, Partnership for Economic Opportunity through Technology in the Americas and DigiPark Canada addressing these difficult challenges. With creativity, hard work and goodwill, you aim to foster lifelong learning and access to economic opportunities among indigenous people by providing access to equality, targeted and culturally appropriate mentorship, skills training, and spaces for collaboration. In doing so, you will be generating opportunities for the participants to find an internship or a job, earn a promotion, create or strengthen a business, or start their formal education in line with the needs of the 21st century. The signing of an MOU in June by the Trust and the Native Women's Association of Canada was a big step for, towards the fulfillment of this project. I congratulate you for this achievement. Moreover, considering that the pilot project includes a focus on Indigenous women. The gender intersectional approach is relevant in every endeavor of sustainable development. The match between the goals of this pilot project in terms of design and implementation with the mission of UAC is unmistakable. This includes providing computer science and digital skills trained to teachers, facilitators, and knowledge keepers of different levels and disciplines in the in indigenous communities. As a result, these teachers can become multiplied agents with the ability to empower the next generation of young adults to learn the skills to compete in the new economy. Although it is now a pilot project, it is an ambitious pro one that points to the right directions in accordance with the American Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples and the 2030 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. I cannot finish without referencing the sensitive time in which we find ourselves. September 30th is Truth and Reconciliation Day in Canada, a day that honors the children who never return home and survivors of residential schools as well as their families and communities. The public uh, commemoration of the tragic and painful history and ongoing impact of residential school is a vital component of reconciliation. Our swords and hearts are with the victims during these days. Finally, I would like to reiterate my congratulations to Rock and the Trust for the Americas for the extraordinary work you are doing. You can keep counting on our support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Almagro, for your kind words. You have truly been an inspiration for us all to achieve this milestone we reached today. It has been an honor for the Trust for the Americas and the OIS to host this virtual gathering. Thank you again, Mr. Lingu. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. I hope you have a great day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you so much. Bye.